Marine macroalgae or seaweeds are primitive groups of plants that are lacking true roots, stems and leaves. They belong to three different groups on the basis of talus color. Brown algae, phylum ochrophyta, red algae, phylum rhodophyta, and green algae, phylum chlorophyta. Red and brown algae are almost exclusively marine, while green algae are common in fresh water like rivers, lakes, and even in terrestrial dwelling akin to rocks, walls, houses, and tree bark. The seaweed flora of India is highly diversified and comprises mostly of tropical species. Many of the rocky beaches, mud flats, estuaries, coral reefs and lagoons along the Indian coast provide ideal habitats for the growth of seaweeds. Seaweeds have been cited as early as 2500 years ago in Chinese literature. Many countries, including India, started utilizing this neglected renewable marine resource. Cultivating the seas is not something new because people around the world have been doing it for centuries. In fact, it's even done in India, in parts of Tamil Nadu and Gujarat. Seaweeds are fast emerging as a viable alternative for ensuring food and nutritional security. Growing these seaweeds are not as hard as it sounds because you just put it into water, let it stay there for 30 to 45 days, no more inputs. It's got the seawater and the sun it needs and then it just grows. Simple as that. Seaweeds most exploited for culture include the brown algae followed by the red algae and a small amount of green algae. China holds the first rank in production of all the above three categories, followed by North and South Korea, Japan, Philippines, Chile, Norway, Indonesia, USA, and India. Seaweeds are grown abundantly along the Tamil Nadu and Gujarat coasts and around Lakshadweep and Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Rich seaweed beds are found around Mumbai, Ratnagiri, Goa, Karwar, Varkala, Viringyam and Pulikat in Tamil Nadu and Chilka in Orissa. The film looks into the collection and processing of agar and alginates along the coasts of Tamil Nadu, particularly the coast of Ramanathapuram district. Here the seaweed is collected both from the waters off the mainland coast and those surrounding the chain of offshore islands. Harvesting of agarophytes is done through inshore collection during low tide on the shores of neighboring islands and by diving from boats when the seaweed is further out. For the people in the coastal villages, fishing is their main income and seaweed collection is an important second source of income. For the women, who are otherwise not actively employed in fishing, seaweed collection may be their only income. Hand-picking of seaweed is normally carried out by women equipped with divers masks and a net bag. Harvesting of agarophytes is done through inshore collection during low tide on the shores of neighboring islands and by diving from boats when the seaweed is further out. 
So what you're seeing is the seaweed culture. Uh, you can see the flo bamboo raft floating in the sea. And this bamboo raft contains nylon ropes, almost 10 to 15 ropes connected. To each rope, a small bit of seaweed is attached. And then they're allowed to hang. And below this, you can see a net, which prevents the predators to eat on the seaweeds. This will take nearly 15 to 15 days to harvest a small uh, piece of seaweeds. So in this bamboo raft, you can collect nearly two to three kilograms of seaweed. So this seaweed is called Capophysis. This is an exotic species, not belong to India, but from other countries. And then this is mainly cultured uh, uh, just to, to make a liquid fertilizer out of this seaweed where the fertilizer is used to, uh, for the growth of the plantation crops. So this is the harvested seaweed from the rafts uh, after 40 days of culture. This each weighs around 8 kilograms, can grow up to 20 kilograms. Now they are harvesting it and then part of the seaweed, again they are using as a seaweed that the woman is doing as a seaweed. Uh, uh, this is the uh, this is the seed which they will tie to the raft. Again, it will start growing, and then after 40 days, they will harvest like this. Here, what you are seeing is after collecting from the sea, the seaweeds are dried. They are separated. The women folks who collected the seaweeds uh, from the sea are now separating them in, and then spread them in the sand for drying purpose. Then they will, after drying, they will separate the both seaweeds. Now you can see the people are sorting out two types of seeds. One is green seaweed, another one is red seaweed. Uh, and then this is get dried here partly, and then it is sold to the big companies for extraction of alginic acid and for further processing. Red and brown seaweeds collected from the small buyers in and around Rameshwaram and other coastal areas were transported to the industry for large-scale production of sodium alginate, alginic acid, carrageenan, agar, etc. Now this is Kappa ficus or uh, Eucuma cotoni, which is a cultivated seaweed and we make uh, carrageenan from this. Now I am going to extract carrageenan from this red seaweed, kappa ficus alveraceae powder. 10 gram of red seaweed powder was taken to this. Add 500 ml of distilled water and kept in uh, stirrer at 90 degrees Celsius for 2 hours. After two hours of stirring, it was then filtered. This is seaweed material. This is the carrageenan extract. Equal volume of ethanol was added to precipitate the carrageenan. This 
is the final product then it was dried and made into powder Carrageenans are generally employed for their physical functions in gelation in foods like ice cream viscous behavior and stabilization they are also used in lipsticks soaps film paint varnish and buttons the recent species which has been brought to india is capafagus alvarezi and this capafagus alvarezi is having a tremendous growth potential and it grows uh, nearly uh, in 45 days it uh, grows to 4 to 5 times uh, increase in biomass and the biomass will be um, and the biomass which yield uh, from uh, the cultivation can yield 50% dry weight of its carrageenan which is a very valuable product in the food and pharmaceutical industries and uh, that gives the boosting for the farmer to cultivate and many of the industries are coming up although we don't have a proper uh, uh, extraction unit so far established exclusively for carrageenan if that also comes out and the whole coastal area can be taken into account for the cultivation of capafagus definitely seaweed industry will boost now this is sargassum which we collect from natural beds you know th uh, this particular one now alginate is produced from this i am going to extract sodium alginate for this 20 g of seaweed sample was taken and it was soaked in 2% formaldehyde solution this is 2% of formaldehyde solution then it was mixed well it was incubated uh, at room temperature for 24 hours it was filtered to remove that filtrate after the, this process that seaweed material was taken for further experiment then 0.2 molar hcl was added then it was mixed well and incubated at room temperature for 24 hours after 24 hours then this uh, it was filtered to this add 2 percentage sodium carbonate incubated at room temperature for 24 hours after 24 hours of incubation then it was filtered after sodium uh, carbonate extraction uh, that solution is more viscous add 2.5 percentage sodium hypochlorite for bleaching then it was dried in hot air oven at 60 degree celsius final product uh, sodium alginate in powder form this is sodium alginate food grade with fssai license i think you can see it here you know on that okay th this is a food grade this is as per bureau of indian standards this is goes in all as a food additive in ice creams tomato ketchup and various food items the next one is potassium alginate now this is again another salt of alginate but this essentially goes in food but it can also has a lot of industrial application like welding electrode the other one is ammonium alginate the third bag now that is essentially going for uh, rubber latex uh, creaming 
know, so that's for a different sort of an industry. The fourth is sodium alginate, uh, uh, just industrial grade. Now, when we come next, we come to algae cream. Now, that's a blend of our products, which is used as an ice cream stabilizer, which we sell to the ice cream manufacturers. The next is peg gel. Actually, this is carignan, which we manufacture. We sell it under a trade name called peg gel. And this is calcium alginate, once again an alginate which is used for welding electrode mainly. It can also be used in bandages for as a wound healing and all that, they use it in bandages. This is alginic acid, uh, essentially it's mainly used by the drug industry for uh, disintegrating tablets like even Crocin Advance uses this material and antacids like Gaviscon and all buy from us. Uh, reflux, Gaviscon buy from us. So these are the various grades of alginate and peg gel and blends we make. Agar agar, agar rose and carrageenan are commercially valuable substances extracted from red seaweeds. Agar is used extensively in food preparation and in the pharmaceutical industry as a laxative or as an outer cover of capsules. This industry has a lot of byproducts. Nothing goes waste in the seaweed industry. The effluent of seaweed industry containing high acidity, 2 to 3 pH, is further processed and brought to normal pH 6 to 7 by treating with algae and aeration, so that this treated effluent is mixed with the waste product of seaweed after extraction of products. It's a very slow process. It takes 18, 18 months, more or less, to biodegrade and compost the material. And we get a beautiful manure, which you can see right here. The first sample is the manure. Now, we also produce from this with some special technology that we have developed, you know, where we make what's called as a gel, you know, which is again organic certified. And this is the gel. And uh, this is our gel, which we uh, sell. You know, and it is used, now one can of that gel is enough for one acre and uh, the studies show it in, can increase yields of about 20 to 30 percent. The second can is what we call as plankton, O6 plankton. This is used for fish feed. This comes from our FICO remediation plant, the biomass. Now this is something which we have now introduced because most of the uh, farming is going to switch to uh, drip irrigation. So this is actually O6 drip as we call, this can, this is, can be just mixed and used with the drip. It, it is, uh, it will not choke the nozzles, nothing, it will just beautifully disperse and go away and again it is organic certified. This is again, we call organic 6, it's a foliar spray which you can dissolve in water and spray on top of plants, you know, as a, as a, uh, as a foliar spray, you know. So th these are the various products we produce in our uh, agriculture division, which is utilizing seaweed and is highly effective, increases yields, reduces pest control. Algae, maybe all of us know that uh, it has got a great potential and uh, it has got immense use in uh, food, in uh, medicine and also in various other applications. At VIT, we are interested in promoting algae research in these three areas. One, algae as a substitute for food. And uh, number two, algae as a medicinal uh, value. And number three, algae as a substitute for energy. In Indian context, we know that we have a serious energy problem. And uh, we are hopeful that in future, with the kind of research what we are going to initiate on algae-based uh, energy research, India will be able to solve at least partly the energy problem. Algae can be effectively used for uh, solar applications and uh, people have uh, found out that algae-based biosolar cells uh, will have a bright future and algae can also be used for production of biofuels which can be used for automobiles and uh, in this era where oil prices are maybe dwindling down but in future maybe 
the prices will go up. So in that context, we need to have a substitution for all the import that we do, mainly petroleum and diesel. And in this context, research on algae as a biofuel uh, will definitely be helpful for Indian economy. The nutritional value of seaweeds is undisputed. They are rich in minerals, vitamins, trace elements and bioactive substances. Sea vegetables for human consumption constitute about 83% of production, while the remainder is used as fertilizers and animal feed additives, medical applications and biotechnical applications. Take these seaweeds and convert it into a renewable resource. A renewable resource which could, you know, be biofuels, which could fuel your cars for tomorrow. It could be renewable plastics, renewable chemicals. It could go into animal feed. It already goes into food ingredients. I mean, it is almost like a magic resource which has so many different uses. And what we like to call it is a biorefinery in which you could take seaweed in and extract all sorts of products from it without leaving a single drop. What these products are, that is the future. There are so many of them right now, but there's still so much work to be done and so much more value which can be extracted from the seaweeds. Seaweeds offer the potential to help meet nutrition and food security needs and also hold other advantages in medicine and farming. Seaweeds contribute to the national economy by supplying materials to the market that would otherwise need to be imported. It is also important in providing income opportunities to many fishing communities, particularly the women.